Hello everyone, my name is Jason, aka Bacon Chest, coach of the St. Kilda Superiors. Welcome to week 7 of the MLBA. This week we're going up against Shuckle King and the Philadelphia Absols. So, uh, this is a really scary matchup. My opponent is currently undefeated. They are 6-0 and going into week 7, so I, I believe they're the last undefeated team uh, remaining in the league. So, yeah, definitely going to be pushing shit uphill. Um... They also have a really scary team, like, which, you know, you would kind of expect from someone who's undefeated, um, but their team consists of Naganadel, Landorus Incarnate with Sheer Force, Mew, uh, Alola Ninetales, Skarmory, Linoon, Thunderous T, Mega LA Kingla with Naganadel, Alola Ninetales, Linoon, and Thundy T, all having Z moves. Um, there's just nothing on this team that isn't scary, basically, uh, particularly for my team. Um, you know, like, uh, Skarm sets up hazards and is obviously a very good defensive response to things like Mega, uh, Mega Gross, I wish I had Mega Gross, uh, Metagross and, uh, Mega Tita and Palaswine, um, and that's probably the least scary thing. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the main issue with this team, actually, is, to be honest, I'm kind of worried that he's gonna bring Kingla, because, um, my water switch in is Tangrowth, and I really cannot bring Tangrowth to this game, because it's just like, so free for things like Meganadel, uh, both Landorusai and Thundee T can have Sludge Wave, um, particularly Thundee T could carry, like, Z Sludge Wave, which would obviously be a huge issue, um, something like Mew could potentially use it as setup, uh, bait, and obviously a little Ninetales puts in work on it, and obviously it can't touch Skarm, um, even Mega Gallade could potentially, like, sub SD, potentially set up on me like that, and, you know, that would obviously be an issue as well. Um, so yeah, I can't bring my best response to Kingler, so Kingler is actually potentially an issue. Um, he's already gotten one mini sweep, I believe, with Kingler so far this season, so it was something that I was a little bit worried about. Obviously, then you've got the big special threats, Nagatadel, uh, Lando I, Thundee T, um, with Veil support from Alola Ninetales, was always just going to be a real issue, and then Mega Gallade is just so bulky and so fast and so powerful, um, really big issue for my team, but, um, I did think that I built a reasonably solid team to take this on. So, started off with Tapu Koko, um, this outspeeds, uh, I believe everything on my opponent's team, uh, with 376, um, I'm looking at it, I think the fastest thing is the Naganadel, um, and this will outspeed that. Um, so, yeah, really, really solid, uh, so my opponent has three things, three or four things that can switch in on a Thunderbolt, and they are Naganadel, uh, Landorus Eye, Mew, like a really bulky Mew, and, uh, Thundy T. Um, all four of those things will take a, uh, Tapunium Z, Nature's Madness, go down to 25%, and then die to Dazzling Gleam. Um, so, that's really handy. So, basically, my opponent, with this set, does not have a solid defensive response to Tapu Koko. Obviously, they could pack a Scarfer to, um, outspeed and KO me, but I'm okay with that because obviously we can potentially take advantage of that with setup moves, um, we can potentially take advantage of that otherwise, and you know, like if I do expect it to be a scarf, we can always scout for that. Uh, so this this is just a really, really solid bond against my opponent's team because if I can get rid of whatever my opponent's dedicated response to um, Thunderbolt Dazzling Gleam is, then we can potentially clean up uh, with this, but mostly a tier to kind of break down uh, one of my opponent's threats. Um, if we can get rid of Thunder T or Lando I early game, um, that, you know, eases my mind in terms of what can potentially set up and uh, threaten me late game. So yeah, really, really solid set there. Uh, second mon is a specially max, max, specially defensive um, Pile Swine. Um, this Pile Swine has Oblivious so that we can get up the rocks on a fast taunt from things like uh, the Thundy T, um, or potentially like a Taunt Mew. Um, also, we didn't necessarily need the Thick Fat in this game because... Um, I wouldn't necessarily expect Ninetale or Ninetales to be clicking an ice move against me, um, and nothing else is really going to click ice moves against me. Like, yeah, there's, there's just not, not, like, it's sort of, yeah, it was sort of a bit of a trade-off where we would take more damage from a Blizzard from all Ninetales in exchange, um, for the fact that we could not be taunted at all, which was just a much better exchange, um, going with that, especially given we are so especially defensive, so we're not really taking that much from a Blizzard from well, nine tails because it is relatively weak. Um, this is a really good check for all of, for those big three, especially offensive threats. So Naganadel, um, 
Lando I and Thundee T. Um, it can pretty much tank most hits unless it's like Z Focus Blast from Thundee T. Uh, I can tank anything bar maybe like a Z Fire Blast from Nagunadel, but again, I expect my opponent to expect me to have Thick Fat, so um, I don't expect them to click Fire Blast, I expect them to probably click uh, Z Draco. Um, which, you know, potentially, I, like, I'm not gonna, like, I, I don't remember what the exact health were on this, um, on these sets, but generally I was building a lot of specially defensive bonds in order to, broadly speaking, take on my opponent's team. If they packed a very, very specific Z move, um, then they could maybe take on specific versions of these mons, but I didn't expect my opponent to necessarily have things for all three of them, um, being the Pile Swine, the Metagross, and the uh, Mega Tyranitar. Oh, and the Tornadoes actually as well. Yeah, I've got like four quite specially defensive ones, because that, that is the one thing with my opponent's team, is that their physical offense is pretty limited to like Linoon, which I do have one response to. Um, I didn't really expect Linoon to come, because I have three forms of priority, a Mega Tyranitar, like I, I just have and a Tangrowth potentially, like I have so many answers to Linoon, but I still had to prep for it, because it could just sweep my team. Um, <laughs> So that, that was a bit of an issue, but with, like aside from Linoon, Mega Gallade, and Kingler, you know, there's not that much physical offense. I was even potentially expecting a physical, physically offensive uh, Landorus Incarnate just to try and um, break through me that way. Um, although obviously without access to Z-Moves, it can't run something like Z-Fly to take on a uh, Tangerith, but yeah. Um, I did potentially expect that to come to take on things like Assault Vest, uh, Metagross a bit better. But anyway, um, so yeah, Earthquake, Ice Cold Crash, Ice Shard, Stealth Rock, that's a pretty standard set. So let's move on to the Metagross. This is an Assault Vest Metagross, as I've um, already kind of flagged. Um, a lot of attack with Adamant to, you know, do a hell of a lot of damage. I think this lets us um, KO Lando I, guaranteed with Ice Punch. Uh, could have been for something else, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the special defense, okay, yeah, so this max HP lets us live a Life Orb Earth. Life Orb Jolly Earthquake from Landorus I, I believe, and this special defense allows us to live a timid Life Orb Earth Power from Lando I. So yeah, we can take Lando I um, with this set. Uh, Ice Punch, even if they are um, Yachi Berry, is I believe still puts it in range of uh, Bullet Punch. So or at the very least is going to put it, um, take it down a lot, in which case we can just come in and revenge with something like Pile Swine. So that's all good as well. Um, so yeah, this is a really good response to that. Um, really good response to non-Z Fire Blast. Like, Nasty Plot Z Fire Blast Naganadel would take this down, but, you know, I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then it's actually a pretty good response to Thunderous as well, because unless my opponent rocks the, like, Electrium Z, I guess, could be a thing. Um... But, you know, I guess the team with a Pile Swine and a Tangrowth, I kind of expect Phytinium or Poisonium Z um, over Electrium. So, yeah, this thing, and, like, the coverage here is amazing for my opponent's team because, yeah, like, it takes down... Got Thunder Punch for the Kingler, Meteor Mash just hits pretty much everything. Uh, Bullet Punch is great, um, you know, to chip down a lot of these, like, really hyper-offensive threats. And Ice Punch, obviously, hitting Naganadel, Lando Eye, um, and Thundee T. Um, so that's really good. Uh, so here is our um, response to Linoon, which is a Chillan Berry Infernape. Um, we have 56 HP EVs, uh, we tank a plus 6 Adamant Extreme Speed, um, which, like, frankly, I was really impressed by. Good job, Infernape. You have, like, apparently, th like, that natural bulk is not that good, but um, I, I guess Linoon's just that weak that even at plus 6, um, we're able to tank that, so that's really nice. Um, and obviously we can just KO back with pretty much anything, but, you know, probably the close combat. Um, aside from that, um, this set, if my opponent doesn't bring the Linoon, this is obviously my, this is going to be largely sack fodder. Um, although, you know, it's still doing things like outspeeding uh, the Lando and the Thundee. Um, it uh, outspeeds the Mew. Um, outspeeds the... Yeah, and, and that's it. But, um... Yeah, so it can potentially get a hit off, but this is probably going to be sack fodder if Lanoon's not there. Um, just because every other member of my team is really, really important in this game. Um, then we have Mega Titar, uh, Adamant, Max Attack, um, with this amount of speed lets me outspeed a Mega Gallade at uh, plus one. 
Um, and that's really important because then we can, uh, after rocks, potentially kill that thing. Like, we should ki any offensive variant of Mega Galley, we kill after rocks with plus one crunch. Um, if he is very bulky, he can live a hit. Um, but, you know, that's just some. I, I didn't necessarily expect a bulky set because um, I thought that my opponent would want to have enough speed for things like Infernape. Um, because otherwise, obviously, that's a bit of a problem uh, if they can't outspeed Infernape. So I was expecting like fast offensive set. Um, Stone Edge, Thunder Punch, uh, Thunder Punch for the Kingler, and the oh, it's Skarmory actually is the main thing there. Um, obviously, Stone Edge does the same amount to uh, Skarmory, but um, and indeed Kingler. Um, but obviously, you know, we don't. Rely, we don't want to rely on hitting stone edges. Um, so yeah, if we can chip down the Skarmory to around 50, then I believe at plus one we can KO with Thunder Punch. Um, so yeah, that's uh, really good. Um, we D-dance on a lot of my opponent's team, like even things like Lando, um, just because we're so naturally bulky. Um, and we have uh, the obviously the Sandstream up um, for that special defense boost. So, you know, if it's, you know, if it's not Focus Blast Thundee, or if it's um, in pretty much any Naganadel, um, uh, if it's not Vacuum Wave Mew, you know, there, there's a lot of things we could potentially set up on. Um, although I do kind of expect Vacuum Wave Mew to take on a setup, Mega T Tile, but anyway. Um, and then finally, we have an Assault Vest Taunty. Um, this coverage is pretty useful for my opponent's team. Hurricane's just pretty spammable, especially with Heat Wave to hit the Skarmory. Um, obviously the one response being something like the Thundee T, which we can uh, hit with HP Ice pretty well, um, as well as uh, obviously bopping the Lando and doing reliable damage against the Naganadel. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I believe, what was the thing here? Oh yeah, so this was going to be my lead in most situations because it matches up well against pretty much my opponent's entire team except for Thunderous, and it outspeeds any variant of Thunderous isn't Scarf, and we've EV'd this in a way where we live a Scarf Thunderbolt. Um, I believe, um, yeah, I believe we live a modest Scarf Thunderbolt. Uh, I believe was the Calc. Although, if my opponent did run Scarf, they would probably run Timid just to outpace my likely Scarfers in the form of things like Infernate. Um, but yeah, I believe this lives Scarf T Bolt and allows us to get a U-turn. Um, and, you know, go into um, something like Pile Swine or uh, Metagross or Tyranitar to threaten that thing out. So, yeah, um, let's get into how the game went. So, um, you can see, oh, hang on. <laughs> you can see that my opponent decides to bring the Naganadel, the Thundee T, the Mega Gallade, the Mew, the Lando Eye, and the Kingler. Um, so, looking at this matchup, immediate thoughts are, oh god, he did bring the Kingler, he noticed that my water resist was Tangrowth that I didn't really want to bring in because it was so pressured. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about Kingler. Um, I'm... Yeah, like, I mean, other than that, it's really hard to tell what this roster is going to do. I mean, you you pretty much... Like, I knew that was going to be a fairly bulky Mew. Um, and then I was kind of maybe expecting something like an AV Thunderous um, to take on uh, Tapoko better. Um, because I did think one of the other, you know, big offensive threats being either one of the Genies or Naganadel or Mega Gallade was going to be fairly bulky. And I thought the best candidate was Thundee T. Um, and then it would be like Z-Move Naganadel, um, potentially Rock Polish Lando, or maybe like Stealth Rock to Yachi Berry. Um, and then, well, I wasn't sure what to expect from Mega LA, but I wasn't expecting, um, you know, a fast offensive set, probably. Uh, potentially with Sword Stance, actually, was the other thing to um, clean up my team late game. Um, so let's see how the game goes. So, as I said, I'm leading off with Torn, as my opponent decides to lead off with the uh, King Lord. We'll put that on slow, because really slow is, wow, really, really slow. Um, as I can do a ton, an absolute ton with Hurricane, I believe if I'm uh, offensive life orb, it just like knocks it straight, knocks it out. So, um, but I don't, th oh yeah, and I because I knew that I didn't have switch ins to Kingler, <laughs> um, I just decided to click that straight away. Um, I think liquidation potentially had a chance of knocking out, but my opponent had no way of knowing what my spread was, and like bulky tawns eat those and two it KO with ease, so I didn't expect my opponent to sack something that 
obviously pressures things like my Pile Swine and my uh, Infernape and my Mega Tyranitar really heavily in the late game, even um, Metagross as well. Um, so it goes out to Mew, takes 33 from a Hurricane, which means this is a very, very fat Mew. Um, and yeah, we see we do see the leftovers immediately, so I'm just going to U-turn out, um, that's fine. Uh, we're going to go out into Pile Swine, because I just want to get out my rocks here. Um, you know, I was like, the worst thing the Mew could do to me there was Will-O-Wisp, and because it can't taunt me, I'm just going to get rocks up straight away. Um, as my opponent, yeah, takes advantage of that and goes out into Kingler, and, you know, now I just have to sack. I just decide to sack Infernape, because as I said, in my team builder, um, Infernape was the most expendable member of my team. If my opponent did not bring Lainoon, the Lainoon is not there. Infernape is pretty useless, um, particularly because that could easily be a Scarf Lando, and it's like... Aside from that, I mean, I guess I outspeed Thundee T and Mew. I'm not doing any real damage to Mew unless I get into Blaze range. Um, but like, what's gonna put me into Blaze range, really? <laughs> um, so yeah, we that's okay. But this lets us bring out our um, Top Coco. As uh, I'm just trying to remember what I click here. As my opponent goes out into the Thunderous, as I click. Oh, I did, yeah, so, yeah, as I was saying in the team builder, is that I can just click the Guardian of Alola, because I know my opponent's not going to stay in with the Kingla, um, because, you know, it still has a really good matchup against three of my five remaining mons, um, and, you know, my opponent at this early stage of the game has so many responses to Tapu Koko, you know, Thunderous, Naganadel, Lando, uh, even the Mew, all really good responses, so I'm just going to click that Guardian of Alola, get off a ton of damage on this Thunderous, and then I'm not wanting to take a Scarf um, Sludge Wave. I am just going to switch out into Metagross as we take a Life Orb Focus Blast. So I don't really know what my opponent was predicting there. I guess the Pile of Swine. Um, yeah, I guess I guess the Pile of Swine. Um, or maybe the Mega Titar, I guess. Um, but they are able to get pretty good damage off on my Metagross, but they're now going to take a Life Orb hit, which means they're in range of Bullet Punch, so I'm just going to click the BP, get rid of that thing. So that's really nice. Um, Thunderous being gone is great, as my opponent brings out Lando. And without the Thunderous there, um, and with the fact that I still have uh, Pile Swine, um, I'm not too worried about... Uh, so, so, I'm not worried about... Um, keeping my Metagross around too, too much. Um, like, it's mainly, it was mainly here for the Thunder, Thunder and the La and or the Lando. Um, so it's already taken out one of those, and so I'm just going to stay in and click Ice Punch here, because the one thing I can't let this Landorus do is set up, because if this Landorus sets up, um, it does potentially, like, break down my team, particularly if it can, if it can break down Pile of Swine, um, then Naganadel could potentially clean up, um, Theoretically, like, if he doesn't have to pop a Z-move on Pile Swine, it could potentially get, like, a plus three hit. Plus three Z-move off onto Tyranitar, that could potentially take me down and then, you know, snowball from there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to stay in and click Ice Punch here, as my opponent decides to get up rocks. Um, which is amazing, because there goes Landorus. <laughs> um, so that's really good. Rocks are a little bit annoying. Um, obviously chipping away at Taunty, which makes, um... Naganadol a little bit more threatening, and even Mega Gallade actually as well, because my Mega Gallade switching is largely, um, torn. Um, but, you know, that's okay, we're gonna be able to get rid of that, as my opponent now goes down to the Kingla. Once again, I still don't really need this Metagross, <laughs> um, and it, and I still don't have switch-ins to Kingla, so I'm just gonna click the Thunder Punch, because I do have one more turn of Electric Terrain. Um, and again, the one thing I can't let my opponent do is get to plus two speed. So my opponent does in fact go for an agility here, um, as I'm able to just click the Thunder Punch and there goes the Kingler. So <laughs> Metagross picking up three kills. Um, this is an amazing, like at this point in the game, I'm feeling on top of the world. Um, I do know that um, not only can I see the Nagana Bell and the Mew and the Mega Gallade, and I'm thinking, okay, all three of those mods can still beat my entire team depending on their sets. Um, so I'm not too, like, I'm not thinking, oh, we're home and hosed at the moment. I also know the fact that I've watched all of my opponent's previous replays. There have been like three games, I think, this season before this point where my opponent has been down in a similar way, where they've been like three to five down, it's been looking really grim, and they've just pulled out a victory somehow. So, you know, I know this is not over yet. Um, 
as my opponent brings out the Naganadel, um, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to click Bullet Punch because I just need Chip off on this thing to put it in range of Ice Shard. Um, as my opponent goes for the Fire Blast, we actually live that. Um, so we could have clicked Ice Punch into Bullet Punch and knocked my opponent out. Um, but, you know, that that's, that's fine. Um, I just knew that, like, if my opponent was going to go... Uh, was going to click, like, a Z Fire Blast there, um, I didn't want uh, Beast Boost to start racking up against my team. Um, so I click Ball Punch again onto the Mew, and now I'm going to click uh, Video Mash here, because it does the most damage to this Mew, and I don't really have good ways to damage the Mew, so I do want to uh, chip it down. I really wish I'd... Um... No, I mean, yeah, I, co I couldn't carry Toxic, obviously, on this set, because I was a Soul Fest, so um, we aren't able to, you know... If we'd had Toxic here, that would have been amazing, but obviously then we wouldn't have lived hits. Um, so this is going to be a bit stally here, where I'm... My opponent did click the Drain Punch, uh, just missed out on the KO. That was probably a roll, um, to be honest. Um, but, you know, we take those. Um, and we were able to get off the Meteor Mash, and at that point, my opponent is now stuck in this sort of situation... We're, we're stuck in this cycle where... Um, my opponent has to fear the bullet punch on his drain punch, um, leaving the Mew too weakened to wall the rest of my team, um, and I have to fear my, my opponent clicking soft boiled on my bullet punch, then knocking me out and being at like 80 or 90%. So I'm just going to keep clicking medium mash because to me this is in my favor. I have a 20% chance of the attack raise, which will mean that it's an easy to hit KO um, after that point. And also means Bullet Punch will be doing like 35% or something. Um, or like 30, yeah, like 32% or something like that. Um, and I don't, I just don't need Metagross at this point. So, you know, I'd, I'd much rather make sure this Mew's at around 60. So, yeah, um, we've got a few turns in a row of my opponent clicking Soft World. Obviously, yeah, I do have the 10% chance to miss, but I obviously have the higher chance to attack raise. So, the hacks. Um, are kind of in my favor, especially because I could also crit. So it's actually like around a 26% chance for me to come out of this ahead, um, and like only a 10% chance for my opponent to. Um, so you can see, um, yep, my opponent continues to soft boiled. Uh, when do we get the attack raise? We do get an attack raise eventually. Um, might be this turn. Yes, okay, so I get the attack raise, and I should have clicked Bullet Punch, yeah. There's just no real excuse in this play. Um, I should have clicked Bullet Punch. I thought... Yeah. No, I like. I should have known my opponent, as soon as he saw the attack raise, was immediately just going to try and knock me out, because otherwise I'm just too big of a threat. Um, if I click Meteor Mash one more time, then um, I put the Mew really, really low. Um, and yeah, if I click Bullet Punch here, um, the game would have been over at this point. Um, I believe, because the Mew just would have been far, far too low to take on uh, Tapu Koko and uh, Tornadus. Like, obviously, we've already seen the Tornadus does around 33% with Hurricane, so at this point the Mew would have been in range uh, after a bullet punch of Hurricane. Um, it wouldn't have been able to uh, come in. Um, basically, as long as I didn't bring Pylos Wine out, this Mew had nothing to recover up on. Um, left in my team. So, yeah, that was... Uh, this is just a misplay here. I should not have clicked Ball Punch. I was kind of thinking that 64% um, was kind of enough, like, low enough health for me to be able to pressure this Mew. Um, but you see after Lefty's back at 70, and um, the other thought I had was, well, now I set up with DD Tyranitar, Mega Tyranitar, and win the game. Um, and you know, I've got rocks up, so I can kill the Mega Gallade at plus one. Um, so we go for the plus one, and I'm thinking, the fact that he switched this in so confidently, especially, like, so I was thinking, all right, even if this um, Gallade has a little bit of HP investment, um, potentially, you know, because it's, like, only trying to outspeed certain mons, um, it's definitely, it's almost certainly going to be max speed. Um, and I was thinking at 88, we should easily be able to knock this thing out. Um, you can see that uh, my opponent Mega Vols, we click the crunch, and we miss out on the KO. And that is just, like, absolutely terrible. I should, realistically, I should have scouted for that. Um, like, my opponent had to be clicking fighting move there. Um, I, yeah, that, that was just a bad play on my part. Um, 
given I had Tapu Koko and Fornatus, given, um, oh, uh, yeah, given I had Tapu Koko and Fornatus to scout, um, well, not scout, but, like, to be able to switch in and then immediately offensively pressure this thing, um, we really needed that Mega Titar to take on this Mew, because you're now going to see that the Mew has a really, fairly easy time stalling out, uh, my team, um, so yeah, we miss out on the KO with Crunch, that was just me not predicting my opponent having what turns out to be a max HP, max speed, um, Mega Gallade, um, so really, really just, like, amazing prep. Uh, on the part of Chuckle King and the Philadelphia Absols. Um, but this game's not over yet. Um, as you can see, I bring out the Tapu Koko, and I'm just going to click uh, Dazzling Gleam here, I believe, because that just nets me a KO, I'm fairly certain. Um, at this point, yeah, yeah. Like, it kills the um, Naganadol pretty easily. Um, and you can see that my opponent brings out the Mew, um, because obviously um, this is my opponent's win con at this point, it's just defensive uh, Lure Mew. Um, we click the T-Bolt as my opponent goes for soft boil, and my play here is basically hope for status and or just stall out all of my opponent's soft boils uh, to potentially win with Tornadus. Um, we've, this Mew's only shown Drain Punch so far, so I am kind of thinking I should be able to take a few hits from this thing. Um, as you can see, now that he's back at 96, I'm just going to click Nature's Madness, um, because obviously... Um, T-Bolt wasn't, T -Bolt was only doing around 30, so Nature's Bandits is going to do more. I can keep this Mew down at around 50, um, and you can see my opponent goes for Drain Punch here, and I'm thinking, oh, well, this is actually great, like, you know, if Drain Punch is my opponent's best way of hitting me, um, we can potentially outstall this Mew, uh, with Nature's Madness plus T-Bolt. Um, and if we get a para, then we're in an even better position, because we can potentially, um, uh, obviously get some para hacks in our favour, like, over time. But, you see on that turn, my opponent brings out the gong shot, um, the Mew's still at 50, and yeah, this is basically GG, um, unfortunately. Um, my only hope at this point is to get um, a Confusion, or a crit, with um, Hurricane, and you can see that I actually missed the first Hurricane, so that's really, really unfortunate. As my opponent goes for Soft World, he's now back at 100. Um, I'm going to click Hurricane here, do around 30, which is you know, pretty, pretty full damage, and my opponent goes for the Ice Punch. Um, I won't live another one of those, but I can... Um, what I can do here is U-turn out and go into Pile Swine, because um, that potentially does give me one last chance to uh, confuse my opponent, because obviously Pile Swine's taking very little from the Drain Punch. Um, but unfortunately, my lack of attack investment here is really, really crucial because it means that we can't at all offensively pressure this thing. You see Earthquake's doing 28. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to speed up through these last few turns. We do not get the Confuse hacks that we would have required. We actually indeed miss uh, the final Hurricane um, and go down to another Ice Punch. So GG to Shuckle King and the Philadelphia Absol. Unfortunately, we were not able to end your undefeated streak and your tyranny over the MLBA. Um, but yeah, that was a really fun game. Um, I thought that I prepped that really well. I thought I played it overall really well, except for maybe pulling the trigger on Mega Titar a bit too early. Um, slash not going for the ball punch with Metagross. Obviously, that was a bit of a 50... I mean, it was a series of 50-50s. Um, but... I think I, I think I absolutely should have gone for the bullet punch. Um, realistically, it wouldn't have made that much difference to where the Mew ended up, if even if he had gone for soft boiled, um, because um, yeah, it, it just would have put us in another kind of 50-50 afterwards. Realistically, um, so yeah, just a bit unfortunate. Um, but you know, I, I like I don't think we I don't think we played badly there, um, and I think the prep was good and I think we could beat this team in the future um, if we do run into them in playoffs because we are we're still four and three um, after that game uh, I think we're two games clear uh, in our division uh, slash in our conference um, uh, in terms of where we're now like as of I actually do know some week eight results so I'm not gonna like talk about those but um, I believe we are second in our division. Yeah, no, okay. Well, even at the end of week seven, we are second in our division behind Hat. Um, even uh, I think we have better differential, but this league preferences are uh, head to heads for differential as a tiebreaker. So we're just behind Hat because we did lose to him in week one. Um, although we do have the chance to um, avenge that uh, coming up in a few weeks. Um, but. 
Uh, yeah, but we are like a couple of games clear of most of the other people within our uh, of the other people in our division and I think the other people in our conference as well. So yeah, that's gonna be all from me. Um, and until next time, peace.